Hello, everybody. Today is February 2nd, 2024. And I have been sitting with the Lord discussing um, what it is that God is attempting to do with all of us in enlightening humanity, drawing them to himself. Um, each and every man giving each and every man an opportunity to do so from this consistent desire since the days of the garden where we fell away from him and broke away from him to reconcile us to himself, but as well the mission that Satan has that he started in the garden that he would very much like to finish unto every man woman or child possible. And my desire to help God in whatever way, shape, or form that I can in this lifetime to walk with him, to listen to him, to obey him, to heed him, to love him, to adore him, to adorn him even. To assist him in this life, in this mission, in this earth, and unto his mission in this earth, which is recover children, recover his creation. Because I sit with him oftentimes and I look at the truth of scripture, the truth and the facts of what is and in these truth and facts of what is, the majority of people are on a broad path. That's what scripture tells us. The majority of people have fallen into the arms of the wicked one, spiritually, symbolically, figuratively speaking. And many are completely clueless and blind, though, though by the time we reach adulthood, we can determine some things of good and evil for ourselves, or we should be able to, some things, which God tells me gives every man the opportunity to decide whether he is a man who loves and adores righteousness and holiness and values it when he sees it in another or not. Whether the lust of his belly will lead him into an eternal situation where he is opposite of God. And if you're opposite of God, you are not where God is. It's away from God. Figuratively, symbolically, that's the inner man who chooses not to live in righteousness and holiness or truth and decides to live in the lies, swim in the corruption and the carnal nature and be estranged from God and his nature and his way. That vexes my heart and soul because I sit with God and I see the reality of scripture when I read it, I see the reality of scripture. When I look abroad in the world, I see the reality of where man will be forevermore. And most of them will not be with God by far and large in the majority of humans. And my question remains the same every time. What can I do? I'm here. They can see me. I'm in a body. What can you and I do, you the unseen God who couples with his children to manifest his spirit? What can we do? And this entire posting and teaching came about from another one of those sessions of sitting with him in this. Discussing with him about what is the tree of not the knowledge of good and evil. Because when we fell... We fell into that. We fell into the knowledge of good and evil. So what is that really? And we do know that Satan was 
restricted from the garden, if you will, by God. And he was restricted to a imprisonment, like to know of him and his knowledge and his ways was restricted to an imprisonment inside of a tree or a parametered area, if you will, that God hoped man would never venture into on his own. I believe, I believe like all things with God, um, God intended to help man to understand some things about good and evil, but I guarantee you because he's a good father, he would have wanted to uh, determine what was best for man, what to reveal and what not to reveal and when and how. Because when we stepped into that system, when we stepped into that council, when we stepped into that knowledge, it flooded us with no kind of restrictions. It was a full on floodgates open. I don't think that would have been how God would have began to even venture to speak to his holy and righteous children about what evil was. Eventually, probably would have started by saying what rebellion was and what opposite of him was and et cetera and so on. But the depths of the depravity of what we have available to us in this earth came with floodgates wide open by Satan because we were duped into and led astray by our own lusts into that tree. So what is that tree, God? And how can I help your children? How can you and I together help your children understand? And the first thing that uh, he started to show me is we need to talk to them about the two trees, clearly. We need to talk to them about the tree of life, and we need to talk to them about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and what that means, and that there's two persons each one related to a different tree. So essentially good comes from this one and evil comes from this one. And that there's two ways or paths. Each one of those leaders or persons or representations will have a different path or pathway. And there's also two divorces, Janet. And we need to talk to them about the two divorces and the two covenants or the two marriages and unions. Because he said, as you can see by these rings, two become one whether it's Satan or God, to become one. Like same as in agreement and covenanted. And so he began to slowly go over this with me today. And um, it took me quite a while, longer than normal, because I had to order a new mouse. I know that's an offshoot point topic here, but a new mouse for my computer because it's just not working as like it used to. <laughs> so... It doesn't want to highlight properly, um, but we we may do, and he got me through. So his attempt here is to enlighten us so that we understand salvation, believe it or not, so that we understand what happened, what he's attempting to do, what Satan's attempting to do, and what our part is. Our part will either be in rejoining him willingly, or it will be remaining in estrangement willingly but it'll be one or the other and with that i'm going to go into this hebrew 28 96 the definition of good in strong's is good or in the widest sense good and it's also a good or a good thing or a good man or woman the good goods or good thing also it's an adverb that, that can mean well like beautiful, and I have these in, the, the ones that I have in parenthesis are the definers for the words that are in bold. So well, meaning beautiful, best, better, bountiful, cheerful, at ease and fair, which means fair in word, at ease in word, being favored. Um, I don't know what that is. It makes me want to look that up right now. Find, being favored. Being in favor, excuse me, this is what I mean about the mouse. It's been causing so many issues. Being in favor, 
I'm going to remove this for now because I don't know what it is, but you can look it up. A glad, good, good indeed, gracious, joyful, kind, liketh, or loving, merry, most pleasant, pleasing, precious, prosperous, sweet, be well, or wealth and welfare. H7451, evil, which means bad, or as an evil naturally or morally, which then is adversity, affliction, bad calamity, plus displeasing or distress. Um, evil, which is favored man thing. So it's a it's it's a thing that man favors, believe it or not. Um, exceedingly great and grievous, harm, heavy, hurt, hurtful, ill, favored, plus mark of mischief and misery. So it's ill it's ill favored plus mischief and misery naughty or noisome plus not pleased or pleasing sad sadly sorrow sorrow sorrowful trouble vex wicked one it said that worse worse wretched and wrong life h 2416 is alive hence raw and flesh Fresh, as in plant, water, year, and strong. It's also a noun, like living, a living thing, whether literal or figurative. Age, alive, appetite, wild beast, company, congregation, to life, or lively, or living, creature, thing. Raw, quick, springing, running, troop. Knowledge, H1847. Cunning, it's knowledge which means cunning or having or showing skill in achieving one's ends by deceit or evasion. Attractive, ingenuous, which is clever, inventive, divisive, mind, intellect, compare with engine. Norrently, which means no recognize, acquainted with, awares, which means knowledge or perception of a thing, situation, fact. And wittingly, which means with full knowledge and deliberation. Cunning. And it comes from a root of knowledge or to know, but it's also in the sense of possessing erudition or great knowledge, learning, scholarly, or skill. And I'm pretty sure that was supposed to have another parenthesis on the other side of that. And it's said to look up engine. So engine uh, from ingenuous comes from a root of talent, device, in plus baguette, and also ingenuity or cunning, hence the product of ingenuity, a plot or snare, also tool and weapon. Genesis 2, 9, 15 through 17. And out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant, delighted in, beautiful, greatly coveted, delectable, desirable to the sight, and good for food or provision or provender, which means things to be supplied, the tree of life or fresh living raw strong flesh, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge, which is cunning, ingenuous, wittingly awares, a plot or a snare, tool or weapon of good, that's well, be well, at ease, fair, beautiful, better, gracious, joyful, kind, loving, pleasant, merry, sweet, and evil. Bad, naturally or morally, adverse, displeasing, grievous, harmful, ill, hurt, naughty, sorrowful, trouble, vex, wicked, wretched, or wrong. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden or fenced area. These are all strong definitions in the brackets of Eden. So he put him in the garden or the fenced area of Eden to dress it, which means work, serve, till it, be a worshiper a person who shows reverence or adoration for a deity and devotion for, and to keep it, which means hedge it about, that is, guard it, protect, attend to, take heed to self, keeper of self, look narrowly and observe, preserve, guard, regard, save self, watchman. And again, these are the strongest definitions of the words keep it. And the Lord God commanded, which means enjoined in constitute, which is combined a part of a whole, established by law, established a point, set up together, bid, charged, or ordered, sent a messenger to set or put in order the man, which means the ruddy human being um, or mankind, plus another. So it's another, it's another being. Uh, but it also has hypocrite, common sort, low man, man of low degree or person, saying, 
Of every tree of the garden you may eat freely, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it. For in the day or space of time, birth daily, process of time or season, and chronicle that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. Literal or figuratively, be killed, crying dead body, worthy of death be destroyed, caused to be like death, dead, necro, or slain. Hebrews 3.98, eat which is to eat, literal or figurative, but also to burn up, consume, devour, dine, eat, feed on, wise deed, be of meat. Hypocrite comes from the root of acting of a theatrical part, play a part or pretend or un and under and decide or judge. So every tree that is pleasant or delighted in, beautiful, greatly coveted, delectable, desirable to the sight, and good for food or provision or provender, things to be supplied. This means God made pleasant, coveted, make you want, desirable to, to the sight, trees. And these trees were good for delivering us something to intake into our bellies or innermost parts, food. And that food was for provision or provender to bring about a supply of something. The tree of life or the tree of fresh living raw, strong flesh was in the middle of the garden. Notable as middle means symbolically should be the main point of attraction to see from all around. And the tree of knowledge or cunning, ingenuous, wittingly awares, plot or snare, tools, weapons of good, well be well, at ease, fair, beautiful, better, gracious, joyful, kind, loving, pleasant, merry, sweet, and evil, bad, naturally or morally, adverse, displeasing, grievous, harmful, ill, hurt, not powerful, troubled, vexed, wicked, wretched, wrong, was also there. This tells us that there was or is a tree that supplies freshness, living, being alive truly, raw in strength of life to the flesh that is God in union with him, and it has a fruit to be taken in and to fruit out in us the planting of the Lord. But there is also in the garden or heart soil, soul and soil, symbolically spiritually, an option of taking into us as provender or supply of moral bad nature of the carnal fallen, adverse to God's nature, displeasing to God, grievous to God, harmful, ill, hurtful, naughty, sorrowful, troubling, vexing, wicked, wretched, and wrong nature in the garden, in a tree that bore fruit that was good to look at and brought forth provision or provender, supply of something in it for food. And the choice was always man's to, to intake, but the Lord did warn. And yet every parent of a cognizant life being who was designed to make choices to think for self, will, reasoning, decisions, must allow that person to choose for self, or else it is a dictatorship and our Father made us in his image. He thinks and reasons and decides things. The situation was, though, that he gave us the right to choose between doing it sans God, without him and for ourselves only, or with him as our counselor, mentor, leader, and father of us. We chose foolishly, as infants do. Now we must choose another way, which is to deliberately and willfully return to him, his way, his counsel, his leadership, and fatherhood of us, which means this. We give up the right to reason for ourselves, what is good or bad, right or wrong, and we defer all reasoning and choices, wisdom, counsel, and understanding to our Father, to God once again. Understanding that we are infantile beings, led of lusts, know not what is good for us. We don't even know how, what to pray for, nor how to lead. And we desire for him to lead us. We desire for his ways, wisdom, counsel, knowledge, and understanding, for his presence to join to us again and father us. Our father took man, the ruddy human being, mankind, another who was walking out a role, hypocrite, playing a part, under, decide, and judge, a common sort of fellow, a low man, a man of low degree, and put him in the garden. I make this point because man had a role, a position to play out. That was to be his child, essentially, to be one who will judge and decide rightly. This is how our father operates. But he is a lower person or entity than our father, a man of lower degree. Lower degree means not as great. Lesser means not so great as the other, lower in rank or quality. Man was made not as great as God, though made from his glory, beautiful and likeness, a likeness, and lower in rank and quality. 
Quality means the standard of something as measured against other things of a similar kind. The degree of excellence of something. General excellence standard. High standing. And the root definition is character, disposition, particular property or feature of what kind of such a kind. The point here is that man was created lesser than God, as was the fallen one, and yet we resemble God in his glory and in the likeness of him, meaning we have the ability to function as he does, but to a lesser degree. Lesser degree means not as great in size, amount, or importance. It looks like there's a dot there, but I think, oh, it's something on my screen. God is supreme. We are not as created beings. Man, the created, was in an infantile state, but with the ability to fully function when introduced to the garden, which I believe symbolically is union in heart soul with our father. As an infant, but made in his likeness, we could have character development, disposition, which means a person's qualities of mind and character with particular specific features of a certain kind, which means a people having similar characteristics, character, nature in the same way. The issue comes into play when we realize that Satan had the ability to offer to man through his cunning sly influence his option. And in our infancy of being a newly created being, ignorance, unlearned, inexperienced, he was able to dupe us. But we had every opportunity to go to the greater one, and we did not. He even gave us an opportunity after the fact. Adam, Adam, where are you? But we hid from him even then. We stepped away in shame, and so God was attempting to reconcile us through repentance and reconciliation. But man stayed away, estranged, in a death state of dying now, which means broke apart from God and his ways, character, and disposition, which left us coupled with Satan. We now have to uncouple. from Satan and rejoin God wholly into his character, mind, minding, and ways again, willfully, meaning by an act of our will to humble ourselves, apologize, see the error, and agree we must not walk therein any longer. We rejoin, we yoke up to our Father again in his ways and in his character being developed in us. When we will do that, we do not have a need to figure anything of good and evil out for ourselves. In fact, when we agree to step back into vital life found only in God, we come to an agreement with God that we do not know good and evil for ourselves, and we desire to be walking only in good, and he is the only one who can assist us in this. It is reverencing God wholly again as the one above all others, the greatest, the only one able to keep us from all evil. We cannot. And in that, we can and must step out of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which means we step into doing things God's way. And we know good from evil, God holy in his ways from Satan and his, and now must live it. Scripture tells us what God's will is, his character is, his ways are. Do we obey them? For we must now, if we have entered into a contract with God and life, for he is only one way, no other way, and he is only good. Are we walking as he walks? This is the difference between remaining in the tree of cunning intellect, deciphering and deciding, that's stressful too, for itself, or stepping into God, life, and the tree or system of the kingdom way of life, true living, true good, and walk only therein. Freedom, relief, and stressfulness. stresslessness is in the tree of life, and only good is as well. We remain stressed, and we should note we are in the wrong tree if we are. If we remain in the tree of death, intellect trying to decipher right and wrong, good and bad or evil, proper and improper for ourselves. If one has truly entered into the tree of eternal life, then one will rest. Eternal, perpetual, meaning continual and constant, everlasting. The reason many do not rest is that they are hanging out in the tree of death still, the tree that brings estrangement from God. Because man has decided to reason and decide, decipher, and judge all things intellectually for himself. The child of God who, resi- who rests in the reason of God is the child who looks to Father for what is good and right and heeds his leadership. 
They do not try to reason matters for themselves any longer. And in this, there is freedom from being leader of self. And that is where freedom resides. When we decide to not decide for ourselves, nor lead ourselves, nor remain in the intellect alone any longer, but to step into God's mind, the mind of Christ, and gain his counsel from his knowledge, his wisdom, his understanding of all things, and then walk disciplined in that. You see, when we will walk as he walks, we will be free from Satan. When we carry what he carries, we will not carry what Satan does stress, death, anxiety, fear, destruction, etc., we will be walking or living in life eternal or in a perpetual state of alive and well in Christ, having deferred all to his wisdom and character and trusting in him for what is good and then just obeying him there. If we remain obstinate towards surrendering all to him for our own good, we will remain in rebellion to his leadership, to reconciliation and to growing up. We have to become grown-ups spiritually, and grown-ups spiritually are those who know their father, God, is the one who is in charge of all things and ought to be placed there within us as well. You see, the child of God understands that true freedom is found when yoked to God, reverent to God, and assimilating our persons into the kind of person God is. There is no other way to be that will ever bring rest, peace, and proper functionality. God was attempting to fence in Adam in the heart of God, but the fallen one found a way to speak to Adam even there. You see, he spoke as spirit beings do with no space, distance, or time interfer interference. And he offered Adam something to contemplate whilst he was in the fenced area with God. He offered him another way, the way to decide for self and be like God, but not by his leadership. Do it on your own, which was the fallen way. God asked for Adam to work, serve, and be a worshiper unto God. Attention, affection, and effort at equals worship in the garden or heart in relationship to God. To be one who reveres or sees it as valuable, the adoring of God, being devoted to God, hedged about and protecting, guarding, attending to that relationship which would be Adam being mindful of his relationship to God, yoked to him, intertwined, keeping himself in heeding, looking narrowly and observing, preserving, regarding, and saving self as a watchman from anything that would threaten that. We can see that he did not do as God asked, even from the beginning or at minimum, didn't take it as seriously as he should have. For Adam allowed the intrusive counsels and thoughts of Satan, led away by his own lust to reason and think for self to not only come, but to not send him away from the garden, intimacy area with God, nor himself, nor his wife. He allowed the counsel, for he was already led away of his lust to be himself, meaning outside of God's leadership in his life. Like Satan, and especially as Satan keeps speaking, and was not challenged nor cast down, Adam was led away by the enticing idea that he himself could decide right from wrong. If he were to disobey God, eat from the tree of death, completely naive to what it would bring, a total disillusion of their bond or enjoining yoking together. Essentially, we beheld our beauty and were led to stare at what we could do and be instead of our heart focus on God and who he was or is, and what he means to us, namely one to obey as obedience to his superiority in our lives, which means we truly exalt him as wise or greater and needed, is how he said he knows we really love him as being the most exalted one or thing to be sought after. And each time I mention Adam, folks, I want you to understand I'm talking about man, so either male or female, because the female came from him. Adam was asked to uphold reverence and honor God, seeing him as precious, valuable, and needed. And essentially, when we ate of the tree that provides the ability to reason, think, and decide from our own intellect, stands God's counsels, we decided God was not needed. We fell in our souls or hearts before we ever took a bite to release all the evil and good knowledge into us. We fell from his grace, seeing him as beautiful, gracious, desirable, and loved and obeyed first. And then we fell from all things good 
precious, protected, fenced in safety, and into us entered evil. We were led of lust, and lust was conceived in pride. James 1, 14 through 16, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived or clasped, seized, arrested in capture and aided, it brings forth or produces from a seed that's thought allowed to live in, planted, being born, sin or offense is produced and sin when it is finished or consummated and completed brings forth death literal or figurative symbolic do not err or roam from safety of truth and virtue do not go astray be deceived seduced and wander out of the way my beloved brethren lust is always conceived in pride Pride is heart focus on self, thinking self is beautiful, powerful, smart, intelligent, and capable of doing for self. And pride always brings its lusts with lust of the eyes. It was good for food, supplying a, a supply of something, and lust of the flesh. It wanted what it wanted right then, the flesh, and hence the pride of life, the pride of the living creature to decide for self was walked in. The opposite of the humility of life which is God knows better, and I divert all to him and serve him. Instead, we served self, and when we did, we, dis we served death or destruction and estrangement from God into ourselves. Can we see how we need to come full circle back to actually exalting God and his way to actually and perpetually live in life or alive goodness, strength, and provision of God and his ways? We must decide by our will that we will obey God now. We must decide by our will that we desire to listen, heed God's counsel, knowledge, and ways, character, and disposition now. We must decide that we do not know what is good, right, or God's will, but yoking to him, learning of him in scripture and by his spirit, revering him and obeying him, loving him, is the only path now. And in that, we come full circle and we understand intellect alone and on our own of good and evil, will not take us to perpetual life. Only coming back to God, listening to him, doing things his way, will ever bring us into life and out of death. And the Lord God commanded or enjoined in constitute, which means combined part of a whole, established by law, appoint, set up together, and bid, charged, ordered, sent a messenger to set, put up, in order the man, the ruddy human being, mankind, the other, the one with a role to play as child of the Most High, the common one or one of lesser degree. This is saying God was attempting to establish law inside of man, conduct and leadership of that conduct, bidding him or encouraging him per per persuasively, giving him directions of how to put things in godly order. With man being the lesser of God and man and the one needing a teacher, parent, counselor, leader over them to bring them up in the way to be. And he said to man, of every tree of the garden you may eat freely of, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it. This was a direct command for our good, not that we could not, for it was there, but we were not to in order to protect us. But again, God is not a dictatorship or tyrant. He gave us a will that was free to decide for self, no matter how destructive that will might be or away from him and his ways it may lead. Because he was attempting to tell warn man that in the space of time, the day you birth this choice, when you take this way into you or fruit, you will surely die. You will be killed, opposite of live. You will cry in a dead body, opposite of a vibrant, living, strong body. And this body will be worthy of death because we chose another leader, his ways, and we left God, who is life and the provider of. And we will be considered or like death, the dead, the necro, or slain. And these are all Strong's definitions. Necro, the dead, corpse, dead tissue, opposite of living. Slain, kill in a violent way, murder, root definition, strike or kill. Essentially, we stepped into being dead, a non-living entity, corrupted by evil, walking in disobedience, irreverently to God and holiness, unwilling to come under an authority figure would not bow, but stood up to God and his way. And in this, we were violently killed or murdered, struck by Satan and his ways. He was a murderer from the beginning who comes to steal from us, destroy us, and murder us. The way out is to come out of this tree system, this root system in our souls, and step into obedience, revering God, heeding him and his counsels and leadership of us as we now bow to him instead of standing opposed to, 
to him. Remember, we opposed his counsel and leadership through lust and pride seeking for self in the garden. If we will be saved, we will turn, repent from that direction and heading, and we will bow to his leadership, ways, character, disposition, mind, and character, and we will assimilate into it or him. We will yoke and enjoin him in his ways and with his proper position in our lives, Lord of lords, King of kings, and we will obey him again, coming out of pride into humility, which is bowing, and out of lusts of our own hearts and souls and into fulfilling his desires, will, and good pleasure. Full circle back to proper standing with God requires giving up. It requires giving up leading oneself by our intellect of right and wrong and coming into obedience once again of what God says is right or wrong and doing only what is right in his eyes. Because we fell when we decided we would know what was right in our own eyes or perspectives and reasoning of the intellect. The mind is a great force, but undisciplined, it is dangerous and deadly as it will wield the mouth or speech from the heart or soul of that man and lead him to death, estrangement from God, if it is not tempered by God's spirit. Judges 17.6 In those days there was no king in Israel, but every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Do we see what this is really saying? We would not have a king over us, God or a leader, and so we fell, and we fell into doing whatever we decided was right in our own eye or perspective. Israel is the symbolic name for the people of faith in God, his family, essentially. And here the people called by his name would not have him as king or leader over them. Spiritually, figuratively, symbolically, this speaks of our rebellion in the garden, soul, heart, relationship, place with God. And the only way we will come out of this is to turn around from that and make him king, leader, most high one inside our souls, hearts, and minds again. Genesis 3, 1. Now the serpent was more subtle or cunning in a bad sense, crafty than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the serpent or the burning one said unto the woman, You shall not surely die, for God does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes or fountains that take all in, your outward appearance, affliction, conceit, countenance, displeasing, eyesight, presence, regard, resemblance of yourselves shall be opened or observed, and you shall be as gods or magistrates, judges deciding in, deciding in verdicts like the most supreme God, knowing good and evil. The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed or execrated, which means loathed, above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon your belly or the lowest position you shall go, and dust or ashes and rubbish you shall eat all the days of your life. And I will put enmity or hostility between you and the woman and between your seed, fruit and posterity, family, duplicates, and seed, time, sowing, and her seed, fruit, and posterity, family, duplicates, and seed, time, sowing. It shall bruise your head, or captain, chiefest place, heights, high places, priest, principal, ruler, some top, and you shall bruise his heel, track, rear of an army, liars in wait. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is come as become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand to take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of even Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. This is from another place. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way or road course of life or mode of action, custom and manner of the tree of life. Cherub, definition, cherub, cherubim, plural, an angelic being as guardians of Eden, as flanking God's throne, hovering over the Ark of the Covenant, the chariot of Jehovah figuratively. And this was taken from Brown Driver Biggs Lexicon, not Strong's. H5175, serpent, which is from Nakash, which is a snake from its hiss. So we can even see in the Strong's that serpent here was from its hiss was the point snake in addition to a reptile in the literal it is also a treacherous or deceitful person something that moves with twisting motion twisting means to distort shape turn or bend in a position or direction move something by rotating it in a ringing or writhing fashion 
to injure or wrench something, to distort and misrep misrepresent words, wind or wind around or through something, interlace or wind strands together, an unusual feature of a person's personality, typically an unhealthy one, a new treatment or outlook, a variation, and the root definition is twin or twine. In Genesis 3, the Hebrew word nakesh, meaning the shining one, has been rendered snake or serpent. The above was taken from a Hebrew site online, meaning it was not the choicest of options to choose from to call the fallen one a snake, but was because of the similitude of his hiss or wicked speech brought forth like a whisper. It was actually better to call the snake the shining one, like a spirit, especially one who can purport himself to be a messenger or angel of light or truth. H5377, beguiled, it is Noshaw, and it means to lead astray, that is mentally to delude or morally to seduce, beguile, deceive, greatly and utterly. And God was attempting to point out to humanity that the burning one known as Satan, the serpent, like a seraph, is called a serpent for their, for their movements. The cherub, the angelic spirit messenger being that was to be a guardian of Eden, the garden relationship with God and man at the marriage seat of covenant, who was to flank God's throne, which means encompass around guard and strengthen it, hovering over the Ark of the Covenant, had gone rogue and was on a path of destruction. And God wished to keep him and his ways away from his family because he was more cunning and crafty than any other creature God created. And he came to twist pervert things because that's his person. He's a treacherous and deceitful person who moves in and with twistings, he distorts, sh distorts shape, turns or bends someone or something from a position or direction by rotating it, turning it around the other way in a writhing in a ringing or writhing fashion, like a snake, see the reference, causes to injure or wrench something twisted up, distort and misrepresent words, wind around and through interlacing strands together like stories or yarns, fables or fiction lies, and uses his features of his personality, his unhealthy personality and ways to give a new outlook and a variation, which means to turn from something else or someone else like God, and he means to duplicate himself in us, which means twinning and twining. I'm not sure how you spell twining, but I'm going to go with that. And it's probably going to tell me I'm wrong. Twining. Then this would be twinning with a double N, right? But it says it. I'm going to go with, we're going to just add this ignore it he aims to lead astray from god and godliness mentally to delude and morally seduce beguile to deceive greatly and utterly which means totally we have to see this and understand this and if we do not know our father by coming back to him willfully choosing to yoke to him and righteousness or holiness once again to walk in his ways and by his leadership over us we exalt as we exalt him within and throw our own intellect down, choosing to not lean on our own understanding, but to exalt him and his acknowledging him once again, then he will direct our way again. He will not even direct our path until we desire for him to do so. That is what a gentleman or a nobleman does. He is good. Our outward appearance and the fountains of our perception were afflicted through conceit, self-focused, took our hearts off God, and we became displeasing in presence, regard, and resemblance to God. We began to observe ourselves as magistrates, the ultimate deciders, not God over us, and we stepped into God's position in our hearts, the one we go to for counsel, self, where all judging and deciding and verdicts are made. We stepped into the most highest position like Satan, and we took over where only he is to be placed, and there we have been deciding right and wrong to do so ever since. We were beguiled by Satan and his influence, and we will have to come out of all of that willingly to enter back into union with our Father once again through true repentance or true turnaround to serve him again, not ourselves, having a God over us. Because if not, we will go where Satan does because we willfully choose to stay tight, tied, yoked, covenanting with him, and he's on his way to the lake of fire for eternity. 
God execrates or loathes Satan more than any other creature he has made. And he is accursed because of this. We must not be as Satan, nor remain in his ways and character, or this type of person remains God's opponent or opposite and enemy and will be loathed as well. And God said he will be the lowliest on his belly forevermore, hence like a fire was created for him, and he will eat ashes and rubbish or garbage, garbage and waste forevermore. And God put hostility between the woman and Satan. That means women hate Satan and will be hostile toward him and his ways. We were duped. And if we learn from it, we are his adversary when we will uphold God holy. Women in strong states as one definition, the adulteress. And so when we come back, bow to father again and to holiness and righteousness, honoring him and obeying him, we become an adversary, a hostile opponent to Satan. Our seed, our family duplicates, that's birthing and creating more like us, following after righteousness and holiness with obedience and reverence toward God again, will be hostile toward him too, becoming his adversary or opponents spiritually. So can we see how Satan would not like any of this to take place? Because if this stuff takes place, then all of our children are gaining in, in God's army. They are coming more ranks against Satan and his plots and ploys in this earth. And in that our seed or kind shall bruise his leadership in them first, being corrected through repentance and casting down his image and counsels and ways, and the high places, the priestly places that are to be given to the high priest and ruler of us at the sum top, shall return to the most high and holy one. God was upset with Adam too. He said, because you listened to your wife, he was supposed to heed God, but he gave over leadership to his wife. In this, men will have to learn to bow and obey our Lord once again as the leader of his ways and counsels too. They both sinned. They both erred. And in that, both will have to learn their place again for both fell into harlotry against God. Good. The Lord want the men in proper standing and position with God. And good godly men know what it is to defend, lead, love, and honor the woman, the other vessel, and cherish their help meet as our bridegroom displays unto all, both men and women. He will bruise his heel. Ever think about why that is in the male tense? Because we are to be grown up, coming out of the tree of death, intellectual knowledge and leadership of self and right and wrong, good and evil, and come back into union with life, the spirit of, and in that birth the man-child, the fully mature one in Christ. His heel is a reference to the way or the road or the paths we walk in life. And Satan will come to sneak attack in the recesses at the rear or dark places if they're still in us, lying in wait to deceive us. But with God, we can be free and defended by the truth himself. But we must come full circle again and willingly leave the tree of self-determining and decide once and for all. For once and for all of our life, God knows what's best. He has laid it out in scripture. I will learn it and of him and his ways, and I will walk therein. This is the Romans 8 manifesting the spirit of Christ, their father, child of God. There is no other child of God. We came into the knowledge of good and evil and became like God holy. But God holy is the only one that can know of evil and never associate with it or come into agreement with it or walk in it. If we desire for this as well, we will come back to him and come back under him in reverence and obedience. Until then, we are still our own boss, obstinate in deciding what we will remain in and do, reason and decide, based on swimming inside self-intellect or our own understanding, not his. And he could not have us take from the tree of living that way forever meaning we needed reforming, reformation through repentance and yoking with our Father in sanctification cleanup before we stepped into eternal existence in the way of corruption. You see, one will exist forever either in the state of eternal death, opposite God's ways and person, and without him in torment, or we will enter back into life, God's ways, person, and truly being alive under and yoked to him. But the choice is ours. He desired that we had the opportunity to exit the corruption, entering back into union with him through Christ, the perfect one. So God can take his time clean, cleaning us up, reshaping us. Remember, that's in how one's mind and character is back into his shape, character, image, mind, and sanctify us by his word, his truth of, of purity. 
Before we enter into living corrupted forever, he saved us from entering into an eternal state that would not be able to be changed. This lifetime is for reformation change. This lifetime is to come out of alliance with Satan, his ways and his character and leadership, and come back to God, allegiance to him, his ways and character and leadership. This is why salvation without sanctification and reformation is lunacy. Lunacy equals insanity, extreme state of folly. Insanity means state of being mentally ill or mad, extreme foolishness, irrational, state of mind that prevents normal perception, a state of extreme distraction, and the root definition is not healthy. So God sent man out of the garden so he would not enter into a state that would not be ever able to be amended perpetually for all of eterni eternity existence. He drove man out in Strong's, the states divorced and expatriated. He drove out from possession, ownership, and yoking man. He thrust him out of relationship covenant with him or being intertwined. And it will be because of a willful decision to humble ourselves to him, bow and reverence him again, that we will come back to covenant with him, marriage, yoking, and contracted. And there are burning ones, cherubim, who guard that way back to him in the Garden of Eden to this day. And the only way back into eternal life with God holy again is through willful and obedient, is, is through willful and obedient choice to enter back into contracted relationship with him again under his leadership and in reverence to his person and holy ways upheld within us making him a high one in our souls our hearts those beings were designed and meant to guard and protect the way of life with with god satan fell from that but others are here to help us with that and when we come back to god through christ and his blood we are and we are serious in our souls toward him and his righteousness and choose to be that we are allowed entrance back coming full circle back into life as we once were led into death. This is the way and the life found only in and through Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, the Christ, and the choice has always been ours. But the way back to him begins with realizing we do not know what is good or right. And we choose to relinquish this internal debating and reasoning to now be led of his spirit and his truth, his ways and his righteousness. And we choose to be this from our very souls. We choose to return to the ancient paths of righteousness and to be like him in shape, conduct, character, demeanor again, holy as he is holy. When we choose this and turn from the wicked ways, we enter back into covenant or contracted union with the spirit again. And we will and he will start and finish a good work in us as we are his workmanship or his project to reform. We cannot come into a vain understanding of salvation. Salvation includes reformation, a reforming of our inner person. For without that, nothing changed from the fall of the garden where we chose to lead ourselves in the lifetime God gave to us in this earth or dirt body realm. If we don't change inside and learn to uphold holy living or righteousness, we remain exalting unrighteous living. Our souls remain bound to those ways and paths and that path leads to destruction and hell. Then hell is thrown with its inhabitants into the lake of fire forever. Salvation has always been coming back to God to live yoked to him, and he is holy. It has always been because we cho choose to know the being of holiness, become holy like he is again. We revere holiness and righteousness, love him, obey him, and partner with him again. And he requires a reformed, changed full circle, sanctified, cleaned up, living in truth, purity, and holiness once again, and consecrating our lives to him, choosing him, only him, and bowing and vowing in our souls to him and upholding him and his truth within us making him sacred in us without this understanding that we must exit one tree system and leadership and enter into a covenant with another leader and his ways. We do not understand salvation. What would we have been saved from? Salvation saves us from a way and a person and brings us into a way and a person, Christ Jesus. We were divorced in our rebellion. We are remarried in our reconciliation and obedience. Do we understand the great pearl of an opportunity our God laid before us in giving himself slain before the foundations or beginning of the created world so that we could come back to him and our right minds, character and demeanor as like we were made? 
we chose ignorantly and naively and blindly, we chose nonetheless, but we chose nonetheless to divorce our father, unpartner with him in the garden rebellion. And we will choose now willingly and with clarity of mind to come back to him in reconciliation, which is to make up and marry him, unite as one spirit again, where to become one spirit in Christ Jesus unto our father. Salvation is a marriage and marriage can only take place when we divorce the other one we are married to since the fall. We, when we will do that willingly and honestly and with all we have of our strength, mind and souls to love and obey God again, we have come back into marriage union with his spirit and we have returned coming out of the tree of death, which is self-leadership, deciding right and wrong for ourselves and returning to life thinking and reasoning together in Christ Jesus, we have come full circle. And as you can see from this picture, it's, it's very, very evident. He likes this picture. He wanted me to use it because he said the light was either going to shine inside of man in truth in his hearts and center most of his being, his inner man, or it's not. There is no mincing it either way. And we have to either come into union with God, his light and his spirit and his way and his conduct, his person and be under him, or we're not coming back to him at all because we chose to remain dark inside. And this is what he asked me to bring forth today to help everyone to understand that the two trees, figuratively, spiritually speaking, are the connections, the synapses, the understanding, how things compute within us, who we're listening to, who's running the hard drive of our computer system, what have we come into agreement with and covenanted or married, and whom, who's behind all that. Because essentially, if we yoke to Satan and the way that he lives, we are our own God. That's the whole point. Because Satan summed up, outside of describing his evil and his twistedness and all that, Satan is a person who essentially went his own way to reason for himself. Outside of God's way and outside of God's leadership. If you get out of God, if you get outside of God and his leadership, you are outside holiness and righteousness. So that explains everything of why he operates the way he does, because he's not yoked to, he's not even in proximity to truth and love and righteousness and holiness anymore. Even though that's how God made him, he perverted from that. The perversion came when he looked at himself. That's all it took, folks. All it took was for him to focus on himself and not God. When you take your heart and affections and you focus on your own life, live your best life ever, here, now, do what you want, make your memories, go where you want to go, drink what you want to drink, be with who you want to be with, do what you want to do. You are your own God. You are looking at yourself. You are in love with yourself. You are finding pleasure with yourself. Your eyes are fixated on you. It is the epitome of the selfie generation, the selfish generation, and we have become the adulterous generation because our eyes are no longer because what you behold you is, is is what you worship that's what who you love so if we're this generation who's only looking at ourselves to our own lives and and to try to live whatever we consider our best life ever here then your eyes are not focused on the other your eyes are not focused on god you're not obedient to god you're not under god you're not under his authority you're doing your own gig you have become the very workings of satan so essentially satan is when we will not be under an authority figure God. We have to understand this because the whole tree of knowledge of good and evil is to learn how to reason for yourself what's right and wrong. And folks, he said, we don't even know what to pray for, let alone know what's right and wrong or good and evil and why. And the only way we're ever going to come out of any of that fall from the garden is very simple. That's the great thing. It's not hard at all. You go and you come into agreement and covenant and you marry God again because we divorced him. So the first thing we have to do is divorce Satan, divorce self-leadership, divorce trying to figure things out for yourself. Come back under him, bow down, marry your husband, your spiritual husband, your bridegroom, so that he can lead you. The husband is to lead. Adam fell out of leadership in the garden. He knew better, but he was led away of his own lusts. And then Eve being ignorant, not around for as long as Adam, having known some of it, but got getting it twisted inside of her own head, she fell 
because of her own lust. So they both fell from lust. But but you see, the only reason that Eve usurped leadership is because Adam abdicated it. He gave it away. We can't do that. Both of us are going to have to learn our place again. Women will have to learn their place under a godly man, and a godly man's going to have to learn his place under God and be subject to God and be reverent to God again. That's the way back. It's very simple. We come back under reverence to God. We come back under an authority and a leadership. We admit we don't know what's right or wrong. We don't know what's good or evil. We don't even know what to pray for. We fell apart in the garden. We became estranged and divorced from you. We would like to remarry, re-yoke, rejoin, and commit in a covenanted, contracted marriage agreement with you that we will now henceforth be your woman. We will be your bride under you. We will not usurp you. We know our place now. We fell before. We are the lesser. You are the greater. Sir, God, thank you for Christ Jesus and his blood and his life. And then you live henceforth obeying him. That is salvation. And he just said, I don't think I've ever heard anybody speak about it like that. That's the truth. That's the truth salvation's reconciliation reconciliation means you were broke up and now you're coming back together and if we're going to be serious and make a covenant that's a contract you don't back out of that he doesn't back out of that when you say yes you say yes to marriage forevermore with him spiritually and he will be faithful to finish that good work he's doing in us. But we can't buck. We, we cannot be like Saul where he said, Saul's going to be re what you're doing, what you're doing in this way, kicking against the pricks going to be real hard on you. That's what he said. We don't want to make it hard on us. We want to obey. We want to relinquish. We want to give up thinking that we know what's best. And, and the things that I've learned from God is that even in the areas where I thought whatever, whatever sin ways were fun in the past, they never led to fun ultimately. <laughs> think about drinking or smoking or um, gambling or cheating on someone or whatever it is that's sin. I mean, think of some of whatever you want to think of. The ultimate end result was never good hangovers, cancer, breakups, divorces, loss of money. You see what I'm saying? And demonic strongholds up, up uh, all over us. Attachments. Freedom is in Christ. Freedom is in you giving up your freedom to think and reason for yourself and be an intellectual in this world. Because let me remind us that the intellect of this world is broken and fallen at best. It's broken and fallen at best. It is the intellect born in a broken and fallen system. The only intellect you will ever have that is stellar and supreme is his, which is why he asks us to put on the mind of Christ. Go swim in his mind because he'll show you a whole different perspective. And it's a really serious and heavy one with gravity. That is the only way, is to go back under him and in him. And it's going to be a willing choice. He's not forcing anybody, nor would a husband ever want to force a bride. Would a, would, a, would, a, would a wife want a man to force her into marriage? Or would a man want a woman to force him into marriage? To comply? No. True love is that I love you and I put myself under you as a bride. I put myself in subjection of you. I cast down everybody else that's going to try and come between you and me inside my soul and inside my mind. I exalt you within. I revere, I honor, and I adore you and your way. And I want to return to that because I can see how far we've fallen from your, from your grace and your glory. I'd like to be cleaned up, sir. I'd like to be sanctified and scrubbed by your word and your truth, sir. And I'd like to consecrate my life, which means make you sacred in it. I'd like to consecrate my life to you. I'd like to live a consecrated priestly life. By God, help me. That, he tells me, is what every man would want to marry or every person would want as with a partner. So we, either male or female, will learn that we are the bride of Christ. We are the lesser vessel. But he gave his life for her. He gave his life for her. Are you going to give your life, meaning 
your ability to choose and reason right and wrong for yourself and be an intellectual in this life and come back to him? Are you going to lay your life down for him? Because it's only when we won't lay our life down to willingly join up with him. He's not going to force anybody to marry him. He will plead with you for the entirety of your life, but he will never force anyone. He expects us to make willful choices now, just like we made willful choices in the garden, only this time to willfully choose to lay our will down, to come back under him. And our will is the, the choices we make that lead to decisions and decisions that lead to actions. The actions are either what we do in our body or what we say. So we are going to give all that back to him to bring us up in the way to be, to raise us up as a father. That is the willful decision that we are to make, which is to lay down our will and to do the will of the Father because the children of God are those who are led of his spirit and know and do the will of their Father, which is his good pleasure. That's what he asked me to bring forth today. That's what we need to understand about salvation. That's his dream. That's his desire. That's the fullness of what he accomplished with Christ. That's our side of a partnership. We don't get to walk being obstinate to him, being rebellious of him still, and claim his name. He said, no, 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 no. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. That was the very first thing. Turn from their wicked ways and face him again. Then he'll even hear from heaven to forgive your sin. That is part of the program of salvation. It has to be a true repentance, a true turnaround, where we actually desire to come full circle. And full circle was you started out with me and under me. Do you even choose to come back to that? Because I can clean you up and I can finish my workmanship in you. I can make you as I am again, but that has to be your choice. You willfully fell away. You must willfully choose to rejoin. That is what he asked me to bring forth today, Father. And I pray that this will enlighten every child that you are calling back to you. Everyone who is drawn by the Spirit of God to come to the Son, to come to the truth, to enter through the door and to come back into union with our Father and Creator, I pray that this penetrates with the anointing of God, the truth of it, and that many will be set free when hearing this. And I pray that you'll use it to your liking wherever and however that you desire, Father. And I pray that this has been a blessing to you. I want nothing more than to help you. I want nothing more than to partner with you in a co-mission in this earth to bring forth the goodwill of the Father to the people and that many would repent from their wicked ways and turn and face you again, humble themselves, bow, repent, and go the new way. Walk the new change. Get cleaned up, get sanctified and scrubbed by the word of God and the truth. Letting the truth, the word of God, do a work in them to show them who you made them to be to begin with, to come out of the lies and into the truth and for the truth to be rooted and grounded in them and for them to, to be resolute, defending and guarding it like you asked us to do in the garden. And in that we will preserve self. We will help God to preserve self here, our lives with God, to join you and to live with you forevermore. I pray these things are heard and understood in the precious name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ.